ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to the channel again. I'm Adam Steele and uh, it's a cold winter morning. We are about to head to the studio for a three day session recording a, with a rock and roll band called Stereo Haze and we're going to try and document how we're doing it, how we're doing drums, how we're doing bass, how we're doing guitars, how we're doing vocals, uh, see how much, in a short video at least, we can fit in three days in the life of a studio engineer. Aha! Uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is Stereo Haze. So, if you want to introduce yourselves, I'm Charlie, Diesel, Harry, Ryan, and we are going to spend three days making some sweet rock and roll. Sausage roll. <laughs> now that we've done the very English thing of making sure everyone has a cup of tea and some biscuits, and I'm not even kidding. We have just uh, stopped for tea and biscuits. <laughs> We are now uh, ready to record drums. So what we've done is we've set the whole kit up, as you would expect, it's a two-ton kit. So let's start by talking you through what we've done. So in our kick drums front, there is an Audix D6 just in that kick port there, giving us plenty of punch. And then there's this thing. This is a sub kick. And this is something I'm gonna make a separate video about if that hasn't already been released. Uh, this is essentially like a Yamaha style speaker that's being used as a microphone that gives us that low-end woomph. Now, the snare has three mics on it. So this is quite a nice ringy snare. So here we have a good old SM57 and an Aston Starlight, which is in modern mode. And they are in this block of foam, which stops the hi-hats from bleeding in. And underneath we have an Audix i5, which is actually quite a way away from the snare, but I find that gives quite a nice even tone. The hi-hats have got the SM7B going on. Tom's got a good old 421, and the floor tom has a D112. I love the D112 on floor toms, not so much on kicks. Got my good old uh, SE5s up on overheads. And in the corner we have all the way in the dark. Let's grab a torch. In the dark here, all the way in the corner, we have two SE ribbon microphones, the R1s. These are the same R1 ribbons that Andertons used to use on all their guitar demos. And they, yeah, so they're in a kind of a left-right pattern here. So one's facing that way, one's facing the other way. And they are all the way in the corner and we're going to compress them to absolute death. And so Charlie, the guitarist, is going to be here, tracking with his pedal board into a two notes Le Clean. Uh, these are going to be the scratch tracks, but in, we didn't want to run an amp while we track the drums because we didn't want the bleed on the mics. So we're running a virtual amp into the headphones, and then later on we're going to overdub that with the Fender blaring away. So, let's get tracking. <laughs> so, that was great. What I want to do now is do another take, compare them both. Yeah, see I, just, if you I messed one up in the, in the change. I heard, I heard a one, yeah, but don't worry about a single hit, because if need be, if a whole take's great, apart from three seconds, I can replace a three second bit. Yeah, right. yeah sweet. But if the rest of it was the one, we'll do that. If it wasn't, that's fine. Cool. So, yeah, we'll do another one. Oh. We're having issues on the fifth song of the day, uh, so uh, Charlie's going to interpretive dance the uh, the parts, so we know where everything is. So I'm going to hide this in the corner and uh, conveniently forget about it. Yeah, I know, it, it sounded like it went off then, right. Ah. Right, 
Now for a slow track, where we have got the beast out. We got the uh, the 15 inch Radio King going. And it sounds like a monster. In fact, it sounds so much louder than everything else. We've had to turn the click up to near deafening levels. This here for this one, and we are going to hear the sultry doof doof of this now. in agreement then uh, drums are done yes yes yes, yes. so that's five lots of drum tracks done in one day so now we need to pack down the drums and set up for guitar guitar hi wait wait okay we have just finished tracking guitars for the first song uh, for charlie at least so we've got charlie in here in the uh, control room with pedals galore but going into a little DI box, which is down there somewhere, there it is. But then feeding into this fender, which is somehow not sending us deaf. And that's just because there's a cable coming out the back that is going through under the floor, under the floor, under the floor, and out to here. To this Zilla 1x12 with a Celestian vintage greenback. Yes. Nice. It is the end of day one. And we now have our second set of rhythm guitars set up with many pedals and a, a Black Star HT20 on absolute screaming full. There's nothing quite like a low wattage amp that's absolutely screaming its head off. And this time, this has a Zilla 4x12 with the classic 57 and 421 on it, and we're getting some monstrous tones. So on day two, we will be back and we will be tracking all those rhythm guitars. It's day two and we're pretty much ready to go. We've got most of the stuff still at the studio. I'm bringing the essentials. I've got my eye lock and a fresh bag of coffee ready. A couple of bases in the back and it's time to uh, head out and start with more rhythm guitars. All right, start of day two. Everybody is in and we are ready to make many, many, many tones. So are we actually using any pedals right now, or are we literally just... Just going straight into the amp. Right, okay, sweet. One thing I'm going to do once you're in tune is I'm actually going to uh, unplug you and just go not use the board. Just to get that extra 10%. Rhythm tracking is done, so we are now going to make a giant bass rig with uh, three amps. <laughs> right, let's do it. We're at that point in the recorded sessions where it's time to talk about the, the chronicles of the bass. Mm -hmm. So Harry's been uh, tracking yep. using my number one bass, which says Man of Steel. This is my highly modified jazz bass. We've got other bases as well, we've got a Music Man sub, we've got a, an interesting Ibanez thing, but this seems to be the one we've settled on. And we're not using any pedals in here, we're going into my Groove Tubes Valve DI box, which is a wonderful thing. And then this cable is going under the floor to come out, oh sorry, comes out at the tower of bass. Check this out. So, it turns out we, we played with different speakers, but we decided we're not using all of this. So the cable comes from under the floor into the two notes la bass, which is in fusion mode, and it's doing clean and distorted. And that is then going from the output of that into this Mesa Boogie 5050. It's a valve power amp. And then that's going into this PV 4x10. We were also using this PV Windsor as a secondary channel, a guitar amp, just to get some mid grit. But there was some serious ground loop going on. And I figured the easiest way to sort that out was rather than use the Windsor, uh, we disconnected it and we're using a virtual 
guitar amp as a secondary source. So we've got the DI track, we've got the bass amp, and we've got a guitar amp sound. And together, do you want to turn it up and give us a bit of noise? Is that on full? I was going to say, really give us some noise. tuner that's an entire screen so we know exactly when we're in tune. Works for us. Vocals time, and Charlie's in the booth. We've actually tracked three songs already. <laughs> <laughs> it was just that dance. <laughs> Whatever. We venture far and wide to the depths of the vocal booth, <laughs> where we have set up a slate. ML1 microphone in this rather dark setup, and of course it's because there's a light in here, it's really messing with the camera, but it's a slate ML1, not the vintage version, although they sound absolutely identical. I'll uh, show you on the screen what we're doing with it. Right, so this vocal channel, we've gone a bit slate crazy. We've got the classic tubes, which we settled on the uh, 269 microphone into a New York preamp, drive for days two copies of FG Stress, so all the compression, a little bit of a mid boost, and then a VCC channel. And more DS's than you can shake a stick at, of course, because I like to have quite a bright vocal, so we've got Waves DS, which is the classic. And we're sending this into a plate reverb, Verb Suite Classic, of course. And uh, there's a slapback delay, which is Echo Boy, and that sounds a lot like this. Let's uh, do a version of Contain Yourself, shall we? Indeed. Right, let's do it. You are the hero of the night Of the unconventional types But you're not the man that you claim to be Just pulling outside, you see what can't be seen He roams these streets craving vaccinations Alright, main vocals have just been finished. So uh, Charlie and Diesel have both been in. Uh, Diesel's vocal chain was very slightly different, although funnily enough I think we ended up I, tr I tried every microphone there was in the virtual mix rack and ended up on exactly the same mic that Charlie was using. <laughs> it just works. Uh, the 269 is a, it's not a mic that most people have heard of, but it works really well. And it's a good thick, tubey rock and roll mic. So that's what we went with. Moving on, let's do some lead guitars. Let's, let's get set up for leads anyway. Right. And uh, maybe get something done, but mostly do that tomorrow. Okay. So we're now on to uh, solos and we'll uh, show you the guitar cab later but we're using my trusty PV Windsor. The, it's on low gain input, either than the low gain, it's actually nothing like low gain, especially with the preamp volume at 8, but we're using a, an MXR distortion but instead of using this power supply which was getting a bit of mains noise, we're using a battery pack. A Schecter, I wouldn't have thought to use a Schecter but, you know, whatever works for you. Quite like the sound of it. Yeah? So. Nothing wrong with that, man. And yes, we're using an interesting cab setup, which I'll show you when we finish tracking, because my word, it's noisy in there. <laughs> right, let's uh, do another take of this. I try it with my FG. Yeah. So that's got a bit more balls to it. Okay. Nice, let's, let's swap guitars. So the boys have just gone home at the end of day two. It's been a long day, a good long day, productive, and we got a lot done. We got a lot of the guitar solos done. We ended up switching out, let's just get a torch. 
switching out that MXR for the J Rocket The Dude, which was never really designed to be a high gain pedal, but it sings. And the cab, which I was going to show you, is round here. So it's my Zilla Fat Boy, and I'm using an Alnico Cream with an SM7B, which is so close, so close there to the uh, to the speaker, but. Uh, it's because the capsule so far back in the SM7B. I'm trying to get that closer. And on the left side, we've got a Celestian Redback with a 421 right in the middle. It's a slightly darker speaker. And the mix of the two, the chime of the Albuquerque Cream and the warmth on the uh, Redback combined makes for a wonderful solo tone, which we will finish recording tomorrow on day three. It's day three, and because there's no windows down here, you can't even tell. Hey. But so far, we are ready to rock with the rest of the lead guitars. Uh, Charlie is missing. It turns out he's uh, still in bed, but he's on his way. So we're going to get the rest of the lead guitars tracked, and then hopefully he'll be here by its time. By the time it's time for him to make some vocal noises. <laughs> last solo has just been tracked and the first part of it was an SG with no pedals straight into a, a Marshall style head and then the second half we got this uh, Boo Overdrive which is essentially a tube screamer and uh, give us a, a blast it sounds like sounds like this <laughs> Sounds like an absolute monster. And that, with a little bit of delay and reverb afterwards, is the tone. It gives us this. Now, for backing vocals. Dun, dun, dun. So little time. So incidental. Third you, a third you, then a fourth you. <laughs> One more time. We are you sold yourself to the lowest shelf, but you sold more beats than I. I thought I heard you, can't even see you, but don't want to be the one. That was it. Let's just get a double track of that quickly. You sold yourself to the lowest shelf, but you sold more beats tonight. But I thought I heard you, can't even see you, but don't want to be the one. Yeah, that first one was a little flat, but we're in the right ballpark. Yeah. It's sounding great. El Magnificente. Uh, is there a third verse on this one? No. no. Right, well that's that. Alright, dive out. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll give you all, all four of these. So if you jump in after the third one with that, see, see if that works. Mm. Yeah? Yeah, yeah? Yeah, you know what I mean. So I'll be running back to you, running back to you, running back. Just the third one. Because then there's, there's a bit of a gap in this. If I'm going running back, you could running back to you. Yeah, just a straight octave. Let's try that. Yeah, that, and I'll just double track that. Just to make it sound like it was on purpose. <laughs> okay, so we're doing five tracks in three days. Now, for anyone who doesn't do music production, you might think, what do you need three days for? But for anyone who does audio production, you'll probably think, in three days, that's nearly not enough time. Uh, but it's the middle of day three, and we have everything tracked, and we have the mix about 50% of the way there. So what we're doing now is the lads, 
are listening to all the tracks. And whilst they listen to the tracks, see if there's anything we've missed while we're tracking, make sure there's nothing missing. I am standing in here like a lunatic and I'm listening to what we have on headphones. Now, I've already noticed things that I didn't notice on my monitors, like the vocals need uh, quite a bit more de than they currently have. But overall, I'm quite happy with how this has gone. So I've just got to keep listening and if anything odd pokes out, needs working on, now's the time. All right, the work is done. We are exporting our masters, which we have been using Ozone and a track by the Amazons is our reference. So these are exporting out now and making MP3s as well as WAV files, just so that it's uh, the highest possible quality to send to places that only accept MP3, which places like you know, BBC are producing, they only accept, I think it's MP3 for them. Right, yeah. So you want the highest quality you can, so that's why I've done that as well. Use the WAV files where you can. But if it's a place that will only take MP3s, they're doing as well. And so, they should be released very shortly. I think the actual public release is what, April? Around April, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but they're going to be going to the relevant press associations as soon as possible to try and get more shows and more airplay. Yes. Yes. So, yes. have a look out for Stereo Haze coming at you very soon. <laughs> Steal out. It's actually day four of this three-day recording and mixing session because that's what I tend to do. Uh, I don't know why I've developed this habit, but what I do is we mix and do the master with the band, make sure everything's happy. Then I'll listen to the album or EP, whatever it is, over and over and over and over. And then I'll think, oh, I could change that. I'll change this. Subtle things. So what I'm going to do now, I'm loading up the mix behind you as we speak. Uh, I'm going to do little things like there was a little much de on the vocals, so that's going to be backed off a bit. Uh, the kick drum was just a tiny bit too loud in the mix, I think, where the master didn't quite catch it. Uh, there were a couple of little bits where guitar solos could have been a bit louder. Uh, there was a rhythm guitar that just had a little bit too much of that 3 or 4k kind of scratch. So little things that I'm going to rectify that a lot of people probably wouldn't notice or care about, but would drive me insane. So much potential. So little time. There we are, Aosis. So incidental. So much potential. So little time. So incidental. But you're not the kind. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this, feel free to check out our other videos as you can find here, or check out our Facebook and Twitter, or our Patreon page, which helps us to make more videos like this. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.